there are some that want to make things happen. And then there are those that wake up and make it happen. Those that leave it all on the field, giving their all each day, all day, never giving up, always moving forward. Where midnight is never too late. Where there is no day off, always ready to give their best, never backing down from the right fight. There are those special people committed to sow the right habits to reap a destiny. Thank you for sowing and teaching us the right habits. Because of your obedience, we will reap a God-given destiny. We love and honor you. Happy Mother's Day. Sacrifice is the very thing that is shaping the future and the destiny of those children. Women, particularly mothers, who understand their God-given role are those who are shaping the future, not only of their children, but the future of society. We have to honor these people. We have to thank God for these mothers. Come on, last time. Let's praise God for all the women in South Africa. And our prayer is that God will raise up and lift up the women in South Africa. And our prayer is that God will give us a mother, that God will give us strong, righteous women in positions of authority that will be mothers to the people of South Africa. Pushing off the limit in this moment. Moving all around me. I can see your face. You're reviving the strength inside of my soul. You're igniting, you're calling me to levels that are higher. I can see your face. When I set my heart.
Come on, if you're ready for his fire to fall tonight, Bloemfontein. Oh, come on, it's good to be back in the house. Oh, come on, give him the biggest praise because you sing like it's nobody else's business. I mean, how good it is to be back after two and a half years on a Sunday night in Bloemfontein and to see so many thousands upon thousands in this place while it's raining. Cats and dogs outside, listen, you sing amazing and the presence of God is in this place and God is going to move through this place to every other church through the country and television. Come on. If you are hungry and you are ready for God to touch you and to move you and to use you tonight, lift your hand and say, I am ready in Jesus' name. We want to welcome all the churches with us tonight. Welcome Faith TV, Dr. Andre and Jenny. We want to welcome Facebook Live, YouTube Live, CLC Online radio stations and people all over the nations of the world tonight. We welcome you. The many thousands in Pretoria. Yes, your pastor is preaching from uh, uh, Bloemfontein tonight. I'll be here every second uh, Sunday night. So you better get ready. We are going to fill this place up again and recover the territory that Satan stole in Jesus' name. Johannesburg, Kimberley, Durban, Belito, Cape Town, Mitchell's Plain, Falls Bay, Cales River, George, Jeffreys Bay, Hermanus, uh, Malmesbury, Paddle, West Coast, Belcombe, Lady Brand, come on, welcome them tonight, Bloemfontein. Cup two weeks, London, Uppington, Polokwane, Marking, Pudgett, Struham, Clarksdorp, Nelspray, Peter Marisburg, Port Elizabeth, and we're having our harvest event in um, a, a Wednesday week in the Cricket Stadium, St. George's Park. We are very excited about that. A lot of feedback on these, on these monitors. Uh, Bethlehem, we welcome you. Kwakwa, Booster, Rustenburg, Moinwe, Khabarone, Tsumek, Onkadiva, Swakopman, Vintuk, and everybody else that is happy to be part of the service tonight. God bless you. Take your seats in heavenly places in Jesus' name. Let's do our A game plus. Amen. Good to see violinists and uh, cello. And you are doing a great job. I uh, love the worship. Uh, you led the worship like psalmist tonight. Great anointing. That's what people need. They need to, uh, need to get into the presence of God. I want to talk to you very briefly tonight to the television audience and also to you in this place. I believe that God is raising the greatest generation the world has ever seen. Yeah, you can give yourself a hand clap, but we have to talk about some things for you to be the greatest generation. Because although God has a promise, the promise of God is never automatic. So we are going to have to do some things differently. And that means we are going to have to change some things. Ex near soprano near sublime. So tonight I want to talk about power. Say the word power. And I want you to open your Bibles to Acts chapter 1. And uh, how many of you know that there are many challenges in the world? How many of you are facing challenges in the world somewhere in your life? How many of you know tonight that God has called you to be a conqueror, more than a conqueror? How many of you know that Jesus called you to be the head and not the tail? That the Bible says whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So a lot of people will criticize preachers and say, well, don't always tell people they can win. Well, I'm here tonight to tell you that you can win. I'm here tonight to tell you that you can overcome. I'm here tonight to tell you that you hail from God that the seed of greatness is on the inside of you and that they are destined for great things. If you believe it tonight, shout Amen and give the Lord a mighty praise in the name of Jesus Christ. It's like Jesus rose from the grave and people want us to preach a message of defeat. And uh, He defeated Satan, He defeated death, He defeated the grave. And people want us to preach a message that tells Christians just to survive and just get by. Well, you are not just going to survive. And I don't know what Satan has stolen from you. I want to tell you that you are going to see God's restoration. And you are going to see God's full recovery. 
and you are going to see breakthrough in 2022. Shout amen if you believe it. In the name of Jesus Christ. So Acts chapter 1 verse 8, a well-known scripture, the Bible says, but you shall receive, say it, power. Say power. Say it as if you mean it tonight. Power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When do you receive power? When God shows up. So when God is in the equation, you can expect things to change. A bad situation will become a good situation. A defeated situation will become a victorious situation. A barren situation will become a fruitful situation. Listen, I haven't lost my spirit of expectation. Our God is still able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to His power that works on the inside of us. So uh, I'm not one of those preachers that will steal your faith. I'm one of the preachers that will build your faith. I'm not one of those preachers that will tell you what you cannot do. I'm going to tell you what you can do by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm not somebody that's going to tell you that you have to accept your lot in life. I'm going to tell you that you can rise from the ashes by the power of the Holy Ghost because it's the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead that dwells on the inside of you and greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Shall oh, come and I feel a bridge coming on me. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in this place. Give Him a mighty praise, Bloemfontein. Say with me tonight, say recover. Say victory. Say power. Say breakthrough. Uh huh. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Things will be different because of the anointing. Demonic powers will break because of the anointing. The devil's power is defeated because of the anointing. Oh, come on, I'm not going to stay in a place of defeat. I'm not going to stay in a place of misery. I'm not going to stay in a place of bondage. I'm not going to stay in a place of despair. I'm coming out in the name of Jesus Christ. Say it tonight. Say, I'm coming out because I have power. Say it. I have power. Say it. I have power. Say it. I have power. have to get our sound and monitors right up here when I come here. Um, the problem is people don't expect power because they don't allow the Holy Ghost to be. And uh, Jesus says you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes. Well, that's enough. That's a sermon in itself. You will receive power. Power to change your, your, your situation. Power to move your mountain. Power to walk through your valley. Power to overcome. You will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all and in all the earth, to the ends of the earth. Say again, say power. Now the Greek word power means dunamis, and it means power. It means force. It means ability. Power. Force. Ability. When? When the Holy Ghost comes. When the Holy Ghost shows up. So, so, so people live a powerless life because they live void of the presence of God. People live in defeat because they do not rely on the presence of the Holy Ghost. Because when the Holy Ghost comes... Power comes. It's like when, 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 when rain comes, wet comes. So, so when the Holy Spirit comes, ability comes. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to overcome, but I'm going to overcome by the power of the Holy Ghost. I, I don't know what the future holds, but I know the one who holds the future. I'm, I'm not going to resign to defeat. I'm not going to lie down 
Even when I'm knocked down, I'm not going to stay down. I'm going to be- get back up again. Because the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells on the inside of me. Come on, I cannot stay down and out. I cannot stay defeated. I've got to get back up again because I have, say it, I've got the power. The word dynamis is used a hundred times in the New Testament. In the English word, we derive the word dynamite and dynamic. Some of you need dynamic change in your business. Some of you need dynamic change in your appearance. Amen. Just put on some poly, uh, put on some makeup and uh, just be your best. But we're not going to do the same old, same old. We're not going to be trapped in this COVID fatigue and the vacuum that COVID has left. Tonight, we're getting up on the inside. Tonight, we're getting hungry for victory. Tonight, we're becoming determined to regain territory that we have lost in the name of Jesus. And we are going to do it by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, the Bible says, God has not given you a spirit of timidity. That means God never called you to back away from anything. You don't run away from Goliath, you run to Goliath. You don't run away from your problem, you run to your problem with the power of the Holy Ghost. You don't run away from your challenges, you face your challenges. You don't run away from depression, you face your depression with the power of the Holy Ghost. So God has not given you a spirit of fear, timidity. What happens is when people go through long, prolonged challenges, they lose their boldness, they lose their fighting spirit, and they begin to back off. And they go into what? A white knuckled survival mode. But God says, no, no, no. You shall receive power. And and, and some of you need to receive power power again. Some of you have to be reminded that you've got the power. Some of you have to allow the Holy Ghost to stir you up again. That fighting spirit in the name of Jesus. Some of you have to become determined again that the victory is yours. Come on. The battle has been won and the foe has been overcome. Oh, come on. If you are believing God for victory in some area, jump to your feet and give Him a praise. So um, after David lost everything at um, um, Ziklag, he strengthened himself in the Lord and he attacked the Philistines and he recovered. Say recover. Now everything you lost, God wants you to recover. You have to be hungry for recovery. You cannot accept losses ever. You have to become hungry to regain the territory that you lost and not justify the territory you lost. Because that implies a mindset of defeat. I mean, I've told you a million times that excuses are the crutches of the uncommitted. So it's very easy to say, there's nothing I can do. Well, That's what Paul said. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's not what Joshua and Caleb said. They said, we are well able. Let us rise up at once and possess the land for we are well able in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. That means, uh, like I'm working against myself here. That that means that we are not... um, um, we don't lose our, our, our sound mind. We don't lose our spirit of faith because of challenges. We don't vacillate. We don't doubt the promise of God. We don't question God and we don't question ourselves when we go through a difficult time because the promises of God are yea and amen. Even when Satan gives you his best shot, like Job, God promises you restoration. 
But Job had to get off the ground. And some of you have to hear me tonight. You have to get off the ground. You might be standing on your feet, but you're still lying down on the inside. You have to get hungry for victory. You have to get hungry. You have to get your fighting spirit back. You have to get tough on the inside again. You have to be resilient again in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to rise up in the name of Jesus Christ. And, 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 and make up your mind that enough is enough. Because what you tolerate, you um, accept in your life. So God has not given you a spirit of power, but love, power, and a sound mind. So God promises victory, not defeat. God promises abundance and not lack. God promises breakthrough. Throughout this Bible, there's not a promise where God says, I will forsake you and I will fail you. So, so I don't understand these people that call themselves bloggers and they criticize preachers that tell people that you can have victory. Well, isn't that what Jesus obtained for you? Isn't that what Jesus purchased for you with His precious blood? Isn't that one of the reasons why He gave the Holy Ghost? And the Holy Ghost now lives on the inside of you. And the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the Bible says, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So God promises you dominion. Now, now a lot of you haven't tasted a lot of dominion. But you need to get the smell of victory back. You need to get the, de the desire for victory back. You need to become the hell in with the devil. You have to become sick and tired of being sick and tired. And put away your country western music where you've lost your dog and you've lost your car and you've lost your health and you've lost everything else and put on some praise and put on a spirit of rejoicing and put on a spirit of expectation and a spirit of celebration and get ready, get ready, get ready for God's recovery. Get ready for breakthrough. Get ready for the Holy Ghost to show you what to do. Come on! Get ready for God's turnaround in the name of Jesus Christ. Not by might nor by power, but by the Holy Ghost. Shout Amen and give Him a praise in Jesus' name. So Paul writes to Timothy and he wants him to know that God has given you the dynamic ability to stand strong in the faith. Power, dunamis, force. Ability. You know, it's not feeling weak that matters. It's acting weak. Let the weak say, I am strong. Sometimes there's nobody else to lift you. You've just got to lift yourself. There's nobody else to pick you up. You've got to pick yourself up. Nobody else to comfort you. You've got to allow the Holy Ghost to comfort you. One thing you cannot do is allow yourself to live in neutral. Too many Christians are in neutral right now. So you see it in their commitment toward God. You see it in the way they pray, the way they give, the way they go to church. They're disillusioned, despondent, discouraged. And we're not going to stay there because it's a place of defeat. And something about life is you're either progressing or you're regressing. And if we live without the Holy Ghost, we will regress. The only way forward is through the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost comes, listen. No matter how weak you are, you are not that weak, frail, timid individual. When, you, when the Holy Spirit shows up, He says, power shows up. God's anointing shows up. God's breakthrough anointing. God's breakthrough Power shows up. God's burden removing, yoke destroying power shows up when the Holy Ghost shows up. So no matter what you face, no matter how great the enemy against you, if God be for you, who can be against you? So I want to say this to you. The only one who can stop you is you. The only one that can stop your progress is your self-doubt. 
You have to stop finding the excuse and the reason for where you are and begin to believe in the promises of God and make up your mind, I'm not a camper. I'm a climber. I'm not staying where I am. I'm going forward in the name of Jesus. Oh, say amen and give Him a mighty praise in Jesus' name. So, um, how many of you have got some things that you need to take back? Okay. What you gonna do? Sit and what? Wait for? Huh? What you doing? What did David do? When he suffered severe losses, he ran to God. He got the mind of God, and then he got up strong. And he pursued. Because for you to see God's power in action, you have to show up. If David did not show up on the battleground, there would be no victory. So people want God to deliver them in the closet. He's not going to deliver you in the closet. He's going to deliver you as you climb out the boat. He's going to deliver you on the battleground. He's going to deliver you as you face the enemies. Jehoshaphat, he's going to deliver you when you cry out to God. When you move, God is going to move with you. So, so your action immediately says what you believe. So, so when you believe you have the power, you act like you have the power. You have the force. That's a very powerful word. That means you're unstoppable. That means you cannot be intimidated. That means whatever you touch will live and you will recover. It may take a little bit longer. You may have to dig a little bit deeper, but you have resilience. You have determination. You have courage. You've made up your mind that you are not a quitter, that you are not a rollover, that you're not going to wave the white handkerchief, but that you are going to recover because you've got the power. You've got the power. You've got the Holy Ghost. And with the Holy Ghost, you have dynamite. You have a dynamic ability. You have dynamic capability to expand your business while everybody else is shrinking. Come on, to recover your district, your zone, when everybody else is walking around like it's too difficult. You've got to make up your mind and you've got to act accordingly. Ephesians 3 verse 20, the Bible says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. So the question is, what power is working in you? A negative power or a positive power? A power that limits you or a power that releases you? God has not given you, listen, the spirit of fear or timidity. But God has given you the spirit of power. Love and a sound mind. So what spirit is working in you? You, you, You're blaming somebody else for where you are? Look, this COVID has done a lot. This COVID has messed up people's businesses, messed up people's minds, messed up uh, people's emotions, messed up people's ministries, etc., etc. And I see the difference between uh, people that are progressing and people not. And it's unfortunately the mon- minority that are, that are uh, progressing and recovering. And those are individuals that have made a very, very strong decision that I'm not going to allow the last two years to define who I am. I'm not going to define external things to determine my internal atmosphere. I've not lost myself during this uh, COVID pandemic. I've never doubted myself. I'm not going to look for a reason for failure. I've got God on the inside. I've got capability. I have ability. I have the anointing. I have the creator of the heavens and the earth on the inside of me. So I'm going to get the mind of God. I have power. I have the force. I have the might. I have the ability. I have the know-how. I have the means. I have the force. Come on. To be fruitful and to multiply. When everybody else is 
withering. When everybody else is looking for an excuse. When everybody else is looking for a reason to be where they are. I remind myself. There is a power on the inside of me. There is something working. No, someone working on the inside of me. Come on, I cannot stay dead no more. I cannot stay blind no more. I cannot stay in defeat no more. I cannot stay uh, uh, shuffling no more. Come on, there's somebody on the inside of me and it's the Holy Ghost. Come on. And He's the lifter of my head. It's the Holy Ghost who has anointed me. It's the Holy Ghost who has appointed me. Listen, God has not changed His mind concerning your future, concerning your business, concerning your career, concerning your ministry because of COVID. But no, we have the power. We have the force, not the devil. You know, for those of you that before you got saved, you walked into a bar and you quickly assessed who's who. Okay, never, none of you ever walked in a bar. But okay, if you walk into a gym, you know what power you have. How is it that Christians walk like they have no power? And you talk to people about recovery and it's like, I'm just going to try my best. What do you mean you're going to try your best? If you have God on the inside of you. If you have the Holy Ghost who Jesus sent to lead you, to teach you, to guide you into all truth. The Holy Ghost who knows where the tax money is. The Holy Ghost who knows where you should let down your net. The Holy Ghost who knows where the next harvest will be. The Holy Ghost who will guide you and lead you into all truth. You will receive power after that, after that, not before, after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you will lose your power when you live disconnected and disassociated from the Holy Spirit. John 15. So when you live connected, you live in dominion, not arrogance. You live fully persuaded. You live unintimidated. You live excuse free. And you know that a delay is not a denial. Because you have a vision on the inside. You have full assurance on the inside. You have confidence on the inside because you walk with the Holy Ghost. When, 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 when self-doubt enters a human being Christian, it's because the human being Christian has disconnected from the source of power. So now you doubt who you are and you doubt what you have and you doubt what you can do and more than that, you doubt what God can do. So you live powerless and then you build your doctrine around a powerless religion. The form of godliness denying the power. So there's no change, there's no recovery, there's no movement, there's no provision, there's no breakthrough. And, and you have to justify it, so you have to change your theology and your doctrine to fit in with a powerless life. But God promises you what? Power. So, so we're going to talk about this because it's so important. It's not just to lead people to Jesus Christ. It's to live the victorious Christian life in every area. As a doctor, lawyer, architect, engineer, an accountant, a housewife, a, 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 a parent. It, 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 it gives you the force, the means, the ability, the know-how, the Holy Spirit. It, it gives you everything. So as a doctor, you just know that's where the gifts of the Spirit operate. So you will receive power to be a doctor after your degree. You'll be the standout doctor because of the power. You'll be the standout pastor because you walk in power. You'll be the standout principal because you walk in power, in ability, in force. Some days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven, suffer the violence and the violent take it by force. What's this rollover? What's this trying my best, getting no results? Where, where, where's that in the Bible? Pass it in the Bible. 
Vaste. Ah, ek probeer maar net my beste. Nee, jy probeer nie jou beste nie. Ja, jy probeer jou beste. Maar jy is nie ingehaak by die kracht van God nie. Want as jy die heilige geest het, dan het jy kracht. As jy nie kracht het, het jy nie die heilige geest nie. As jy sikkel, dan is jy dom. En as jy dom is, is het omdat jy nie die Heere soek nie. Hierdie disciples in die wereld verander sonder een cent. Maar hulle het een ding gehad, hulle het kracht gehad. Today people have everything without results because they lack what? They lack power. When you have power, you know what you can do. When you have power, you walk in creative ability. When you walk in power, you can create something out of nothing because that's what God did. When you walk in the power of the Holy Ghost, your words frame your world and shape your world. I'm concerned that people have lowered the way they live to the natural because they are controlled by what they see. And now what they see has become their internal temperature. And I talk to pastors and I talk to people and they look at me as if I'm talking Spanish or French or Greek. And you say to them, but you can change the situation. And they look at you in disbelief. And you can see in their eyes there is no belief. And I'll tell you why. Because they've lost power. They've lost that divine connection with the Holy Ghost. And the circumstances are real. The storms are real. And you've been battered by the storms But apart from God's grace that is there, the power and the force of the Holy Ghost and the presence of the Holy Ghost is what sustains you in the most difficult time. And even more than that is what causes you to prosper when everybody else is floundering. Because that's when God gets the glory. When, 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 when everybody doesn't know it, but you know. When everybody is floundering, but you flourishing. I mean, if the economy is, is, is ideal, it's really not a testimony to make a lot of money. But if everybody is failing and suddenly you are succeeding, people will say, how? Is that one or seven? You know, I say to the pastors all the time, we have a lot of pastors in our ministry, and I say, them all, I say to them all the time, there's something I can't give you. I can't give you what only God can give you. And, and your lack of hunger is indicative of your results. God loves you. You have to go, I know. Thank you for being with us. I'm preaching from Bloomingdale tonight. It's been a great honor to have you with us on television. Remember, Jesus loves you. He has not just a place in heaven for you, but He promises to lead and guide you on this earth. Walk close to Jesus. Treasure Him, love Him, and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. He's there every step. Who's counting for me? He's there every step of the way. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Come on, let's give them a big, big, big God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'll say it again. Um, this generation, I believe, is, is, I think we're blowing too much smoke up your ears in any case. So I should stop that as well. It's one of the greatest generations that have lived on this earth. Uh, we stop, should stop saying you are the greatest generation because that's nonsense. Uh, after Jesus Christ, there's only a, one generation and that's the Christ generation. There's, there's, everything else is irrelevant. And in every generation, there are those that walk with God and those who don't walk with God, those who are serious with God and those who are not serious with God, etc., etc., etc. There are characteristics uh, of entitlement, and uh, we want things easy and instant. But this that God promises doesn't come instant and without hunger. Once somebody 
received that power. Not talking in tongues. There's a lot of people who talk in tongues that have no power. Jesus didn't say you will talk in tongues after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's just a little prayer language. A lot of people that talk in tongues that are as weak as can be. No power. And, and, and we, we, we talk about power. The power, Paul prays in Ephesians chapter 1, he says, I, he prays for the church that they may have an understanding of what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. He says that power is available to you and me. How many people walk in that power? Hmm. That power raised Jesus from the grave. That power defeated Satan. Demonic principalities. That power broke death. He says you will receive that power when you receive the Holy Ghost. Now, I don't want to quote a prophet because there's a lot of prophets that people say are false prophets. I won't quote any prophet's name. But a prophet that was a friend of mine used to say that most people who talk in tongues don't have the Holy Ghost. Now, we can debate about that because um, if we have to talk about this that Jesus talks about, he says you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come. So that means there has to be a significant change when the Holy Spirit comes in your life. And I'm concerned that Pentecostals and Charismatics have reduced the Holy Ghost to Shandai Hyundai tie my bow tie and not power. I mean, after COVID, and it's what's happening all over the world, there are many people that have departed from the faith. Many people have grown cold. But once Jesus is a reality to you, you don't just leave him. And then once you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is a baptism of power, you cannot stay and live a life of defeat. It's not possible. Because with the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to belabor this point because you have to get it. With the Holy Ghost comes power. Not Sunday prophecy. I said to somebody this week that, that prophesies to people every week, and I'm trying to change his mind because there's too many flaky people out there. I said, listen, if you want to prophesy over people, it's okay every now and again to prophesy publicly, but really get people to worship God, and the conversation God has with people should be private, right? So whisper in a person's ear and say, thus say the Lord. But you can't have 10,000 people sit and you prophesy over one person because you make everybody else uh, wanting prophecy, and people live dependent on, I want a word from God. Prophesy, 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 prophesy. He, he, he says you will receive power. When you receive the power of the Holy Ghost, you live independent. You live dependent on God, not independent from the church. You live dependent on a source, a river. Something that doesn't run dry. Something, or let me say, someone that always gives you the solution. So when I talk to people and they pray in tongues and I say to them, and I've had these conversations with people a million times, because the Bible says when you, He will guide you into all truth, right? The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, you have an anointing and you know all things pertaining to your life. The Bible says the anointing will, in verse 27 says, will guide you into all truth. That means even if there's nobody that will support you in the ministry, God will find a raven. I went to Lady Brand without support. And, and, and we built that church. I never came to Bloomington and a crowd was waiting or went to Pretoria and a crowd was waiting or started in Johannesburg and a crowd was waiting. I went with the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost showed me what to do. The power of the Holy Ghost created everything else. I give God the glory. Come on. So you can build something out of nothing no matter what the economy is. If, if, if you have received power. So it's not a difficult 
some to make no power, no Holy Ghost. Because if the Holy Ghost is there to teach you, if the Holy Ghost is there to guide you, if the Holy Ghost is there to show you, if the Holy Ghost is there to give you the, the, the power to impact people, and you're not impacting people, you're doing something unanointed. You're doing something without power. Does it make spiritual sense? Hmm. Because, because power changes things. Power is the rain that causes things to grow. Power is the rain that causes a river to flow. Power is the rain that brings new life. The power does the job, the anointing. When you have the power, the force, the ability, then you are, un you are unstoppable. You don't sit there. And, and, and this is what you can't see in people's minds. They, they, they have a vision, but you don't know what they truly believe. And the other Bible says, God's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according, according, according to the power that works within us. That means we can limit God. Our thoughts can limit God. Psalm 78 verse 41, they limited the Holy One of Israel. God was there in full glory, a pillar of fire, a pillar of cloud. God was there. The giants were there. And the promise of God was there to go and, 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 and possess the land. And they, the Bible says they would not. Because they believed they could not. So when you, you, you watch a business person, and, and I respect this, how some people, I was talking to somebody the other day, and he works literally from 5 o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. He's a multi, multi-billionaire. And he, came, he comes from nowhere. He's a God-made, self-made man. And he comes from a poor background, etc. He connected with God, and he became unstoppable. And he grew. His attitude grew. His mindset grew. He went through betrayals and through absolutely everything. But he just never doubted the promise of God. And he created a business all over South Africa and Africa and just unstoppable. Why does one individual tap into that and another individual decides not to tap into that? Why? When it's available to all of us. And we'd rather take the root and change our doctrine and say, well, uh, if God meant that it, it will be. Really? God is not willing for any to perish. And we know people are dying tonight without Jesus Christ going to hell. There's a lot of things that God doesn't want. But it's happening in our world. Because we are not exercising the authority and power that God has given us. So as we prepare for Pentecost. Um, I, this is just a brain teaser. Is, is you know... Um, <laughs> You have to test your power. When you, when you start going to gym, I saw a lady the other day, she went to gym, the first time she was in gym, and she's young. She couldn't lift the, um, you know, the, the bar. Well, some of you can't if you went to gym, okay? So you can laugh, but I mean, she couldn't lift the bar because her muscle is so unexercised. It's my new English word for the day, okay? And, um, so, if you're trying and you're not getting results, as a belief, luister nou, want nou praat ek wat jy kan verstaan. As jy probeer en jy krijg geen resultate nie, moet nie iemand blameer nie. You are lacking power. You, sir, in that position. Because that power is a creative source is a force that can create light out of darkness, that can change anything over a period of time as you walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Not a once-off, fall on the ground, shake, roll, but live connected, empowered, intertwined with the Holy Spirit. If you look at the early church believers, 
there was a significant change after the Holy Spirit came upon them. So we have to revisit, and we'll do this through our NMO, etc., the impact people have as they come to church. Is there real genuine repentance when people come to Christ? Is there a real lying down of the old, laying down of the old man through baptism? And do they go through the experience where they truly experience a baptism of power, not just receiving a heavenly language? Because I, I was praying in tongues for years before I was baptized in power. When I was baptized in power, everything about my life changed. Suddenly I got results. Doing the same thing with different results. What was the difference? The anointing. The power. That gives you the favor. That gives you the know-how. So this Christian walk is a very supernatural walk. And I mean, if you're in business today, you really can't be in business without partnership with the Holy Ghost. More than that, for those of you that are in the ministry, pastors of churches watching tonight all over South Africa, and my pastors on staff, you cannot be in the ministry without walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not possible. Cause, cause, because that power will, will cause a raven to come, will cause provision to come from a source that you cannot even imagine. I can tell you about building projects, etc., where people try to hijack our building projects, and now God used people that I've seen once in my life, never again. So people always want to play this victim card, why they cannot do something. But if you have the power of the Holy Ghost and you have a vision from God and it's authentic as a department leader in our church or as a businesswoman or a businessman or as a zone pastor or a musician, you have power to create an orchestra. You have power to create a whole social ministry. You have power to, to, to build orphanages. You have power to do absolutely anything. The sky is the limit. Because Jesus said, not our boss off, Jesus said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's what Jesus promised you. So, so then we have to ask the question, Where's the power? When you pray, do things change? When you lay hands on the sick, do they get healed? When Satan attacks you and people may go through a valley of discouragement, do you, do you get the mind of God to walk through that valley? I started tonight by saying to you that God's not destined you for defeat. Nobody. And whatever Satan has stolen from you, and as a church, souls that we lost, this two years where people disconnected from church, the pastors especially, should be so vigilant and should walk so anointed now with God's mind to win the prodigals and the lost without accepting that Things are going to be different because that's not what the Bible says. God says from glory to glory. God says from one degree of glory to a greater degree of glory. God promises that the better years are ahead of us. God promises restoration. God promises breakthrough. God promises blessing. God promises multiplication. God promises increase. Oh, come on. There may be times of setbacks, but then God promises you a great comeback by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on, you better get hungry for God to do great things in your life. And that means you have to live to a whole nother level in your walk with God and not do Christianity the way everybody else is doing Christianity. You're gonna have to become the hungry pastor. You're gonna have to become the one that tarries a little bit longer, that climbs higher on the mountain, that spends more time in the presence of God until you are baptized with the power of the Holy Ghost and my brother and sister you will never be the same after that if you believe it say amen and give the Lord one more praise come on oh give him a praise uh, 
the devil does not have the power. Um, the devil does not decide our, our, our today and tomorrow. The minute you succumb to pressure, you lose control and authority. So no matter how hard life hits you, even when you fall to the ground, you have to lie on that ground with determination that I'm getting up. And I'm getting up more determined. And I'm getting up stronger. And my comeback is going to be greater. And I'm going to do greater things for God. Say amen tonight in Jesus' name. Because God has not abandoned me. God has not forsaken me. Don't you abandon God and forsake Him. Don't you go into your neutral, cynical mode or mindset. You get hungry for victory. You get hungry for breakthrough. You get hungry for recovery. And it's going to be not by might nor by power. It's going to be by the power, by the force by the ability of the Holy Ghost. Shout Amen and give the Lord one more praise. Come on everybody in this place. Praise Him young person. Your future is ahead of you. Praise Him like you're hungry for tomorrow. Praise Him like you believe God for a better future, a better tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on there in Pretoria, give him a praise. Jump on your feet in Pretoria and give him a praise. Come on, Johannesburg, jump to your feet and give him a praise. Shake that spirit of weakness out of you. Shake that spirit of defeat out of you. Shake that spirit of slumber out of you. Come on, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Give Him praise. Stir up that gift. Stir up that anointing. Stir up that anointing. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. The best, the best, the best, the best, the best, the best. The best, the best, the best, the best, the best, the best. The greatest, the greatest, the greatest, the greatest. The best, the best, the best, the best, the best. The greatest, the greatest, the greatest, the greatest, the greatest, the greatest. The greatest, the greatest, the greatest. Come on. Come on. Come on, praise Him. If you can pray in the Holy Ghost, praise Him. Come on, come on. Stir up that gift. Stir up that anointing. Stir up that power. You look at what must be and what is not. You can look and you can go through a, a place of depression or you can get desperate. And I've seen how people look at things and then rather than take a message like this and they get activated, they get negative. Rather than, than becoming tired of being tired, of being average, Joe average. And if you're honest, you're not happy inside. Because God never created you like that. He created you in His image to be fruitful, to be blessed. To multiply, to have dominion. And sometimes we are waiting for God to do things and God says, no, no. You, you have to press in, press in, press in until you are fully persuaded that you have 
what I promised you. He didn't say God is, is going to give you a spirit of power. He says God has not given you the spirit of fear. So if you choose to walk in timidity, and I want to say it again, that timidity means you shy away from, you do not take responsibility. You don't step to the plate. You do not man up. You rather step back like Saul and the rest of Israel. And to recover what Satan stole is not the leadership we need. We need men and women that will step up, that will man up, that will spend time like David in the presence of God until they get the mind of God and that will pursue the devil and that will fight the good fight of faith and they will lay hold on eternal life and they will recover whatever Satan has stolen from them. Oh, come on, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If there's somebody like that tonight, then praise Him like you are somebody like that. Come on, praise Him like you're going to go to another level. Praise Him. Praise Him. God doesn't need a million. He needs 300. 300. Um, that tune you played just now was brilliant. Leave that, go to the gentle one. Lift your hands with me tonight, please. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands all over. Whatever it is that you have to release to God, release it now. Give it all. Give it all. Lay it all down. Let the Holy Ghost talk to you. I was not giving you a spirit of timidity. Don't be intimidated now. Step into your anointing. Now tonight, while every head is bowed, every eye is closed. No one moving, please. There is no life outside of Jesus. This is not a religion, it's a relationship. We cannot do this Jesus thing partially surrendered. There's only one way. And this, that's surrendering all to Him. And you're standing here tonight and you know God is talking to you. And what I'm talking about is what you want. But you've not surrendered your life to Jesus. You've not surrendered all to Him. The presence of God is all over this place. They're in Pretoria. There's too many people that want the taste of victory, but they have one foot in the world, one foot in the church. It's time to become fully committed. Time to repent from a life of sin. And to give yourself to Jesus Christ, every area. To put it all in His hands. To accept Him. You're standing here tonight, maybe you served God at one time, but you've grown cold. You've wandered away from Him. Tonight, God's talking to you. And you want a new beginning. You want to surrender your life to Him. 
all over this place. They're in Pretoria, Johannesburg, all our churches, people praying. The first step out of a life of defeat, a life of bondage, is accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And some people have lost that. They got lost again. Come back to Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You say, Pastor, that's me tonight. I need a new beginning. I need a fresh start. I want to surrender my life to Jesus Christ tonight. I want to give God everything. If that's the desire of your life, quietly where you are, just lift your hand. I want to say a prayer for you. Quickly, all over this place, raise your hand up high. All over. Raise it up. Slip it up. Slip it up. Slip it up. Slip it up. Thank you. Many hands everywhere. Raise it up. Raise it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. All over this place. Raise your hand. Raise it up. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. All over this place. Thank you. God bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Kom vanavond praat die Heere met jou. God roep jou vanavond om jou leven oor te gee, om weg te draai van een leven van sonde, om jou hart aan Jesus te gee vanavond, vanavond is jou nieuwe begin, God klop aan die deur van jou hart vanavond, jy het nog nie hand opgetel, nie tel jou hand op, nou, in Jesus naam, sê ja, God praat met my, dankie, 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 baie hande, jy son, bloem met my, dan Pretoria, tel jou hand op, lift your hand there in Pretoria, slip it up, come on, spirit of boldness on this platform, in Jesus' name. So all over this place, please look at me. Many of you have raised your hands. I want to pray for you. Many raise your hands in Pretoria, in Johannesburg, all over our churches. If you've, if you've raised your hand, I want you to take your Bible, your personal belongings, whatever you brought to church. And maybe you brought a friend. We know that your love and your encouragement will bring that person to Jesus Christ tonight. So all over this place, come on. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to surrender your life to Jesus. Leave your seat wherever you are. Come out of your seat wherever you are and walk down to the altar tonight. Come on and receive a new life and a new beginning. As you repent, as you give yourself to Jesus Christ tonight, as you receive God's love, God's mercy, God's forgiveness, you come in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, let's clap our hands. Walk. Come on, walk strong, walk quick, walk, 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 walk. Come on. They're in Pretoria, leave your seat. Come on, camera, I'm talking. Put me on the camera. Come on, they're in Pretoria, camera. Walk, leave your seat, they're in Pretoria. Leave and walk, 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 walk. Come to the altar tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. There in Cape Town, leave your seat. Walk to the altar tonight. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Camera, camera. In the name of Jesus, you come, you come, you come. You come. You come tonight. Come on. you still want to come leave your seat and walk walk to the front of that church come on
something. Come on. Hallelujah. Invite me. This is my job under the anointing. Step up. Two weeks I'm back. Amen. I love you, but when we win souls, we play. We play hard. We play for souls. So uh, reach your hands out to these people. A great honor um, to pray with all of you, please. Reach your hands out. Get used to me very, very quickly. Again, don't get offended with me. We never end on a low. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I give you my life. I repent of sin. I turn away from the world. I turn to you tonight. And I open my heart. And I accept you as my Lord, as my Savior. Please wash me in your blood. Cleanse me. Thank you that you died for me. I believe with all my heart you rose from the grave. I believe you're alive. Tonight publicly, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. And amen. Amen. Upon the profession of your faith, your sins are forgiven. You go and sin no more. You know, um, as a lot of people criticize altar calls, I don't know why you would do that, because it's the first step to Jesus. So uh, it's like, mm, it's the first step. Now the journey starts where we talk about repentance, change of ownership, be part of God's kingdom and being baptized, etc., etc., etc. But this is the first step. It's not the only step. It's the first step. And thank God there was a pastor who gave an altar call for me to get saved. Now people criticize an opportunity where people can come and take a step toward God to start a process kan ek maar nou net in Afrikaans sê, gaan my verstand te bove, dat jy so onnoosel kan wees, en, en, en jouself a christen noem. Dis nie eers denkbaar, dat iemand so kan dink, dat mense nie die recht het om toegang tot God te heen nie. Dis die laaste stap nie, en you know, let me tell you, Paul, must have been the greatest failure, because every church he pastored, he had to address um, every issue and every sin, and people say if there's true repentance, then there's no sin. When then Paul was an absolute failure. Because we have to deal with the journey of sanctification until Jesus comes back one day. Okay, so this is the first step. And we want to talk to you about the other steps that you have to take. So, um, and give you a Bible if you don't have a Bible. So thank you for being here. You are our special guests. So in Bloomington, if you will turn to my left, your right. Give them a big God bless you in Pretoria. If you will turn to my right, your left. Give them also a big God bless you. And in all the other churches, follow the pastors. Come on, let's give them all a big, 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 big hand clap. Come on, that's amazing. Hundreds and hundreds of people getting saved here in Bloemfontein, in Pretoria, on Mother's Day. Come on, next week, we're going to fill this building. We are yet to win the lost at any cost. See God move in every school. See God move in our universities. See God move in businesses. Come on, the only thing we can take to heaven are people. People. Come on, Bloomington, house of revival. Your best days are ahead of you. Come on, the fields are white and to harvest Cape Town, Pretoria.
mean, turn all of your arms knee geweest nee. Give them a big uh, man clap, the musicians. Don't feel sorry for them. Sorry. When you're in a battle, they line up with the person who leads the battle. That's it. Take your seats. Thank you. It's not a place for sentiment, emotions. Not when we fight for souls. Doesn't work. Everybody knows how I function. Step up to the way that I function very quickly to have the results that God wants us to have. I am working on a series. Maybe I'll start next week. Um, it's a very serious uh, message. Um, it's something that every Christian has to have an understanding on, and that's rethinking life, death, and eternity. Rethinking your life, death, because you're going to die one day, and eternity. The life you live, the day you're going to die, and how you will spend eternity. It's one of them foundation doctrines, and it's something I see that many Christians have become very careless about. That they don't realize how they live their life now, even as born again believers, will affect the way they live eternity. God's plan isn't just to get you to heaven. His plan is much bigger. And people are living out of eternal rewards and so much because they've lost focus of what life is about. And I'm not talking about making a living. We're going to talk about that as well. Because when we talk about spiritual things, sometimes people think, well, I shouldn't be working hard, having goals, visions, dreams, etc. You should. You should have big aspirations, godly ambitions to accelerate so that you can have influence for God's kingdom. That's actually the purpose of influence and prosperity. Because everything else um, doesn't matter. Um, the two most important days of your life, when you were born, when you die, and both of them will happen naked. You come in naked, you leave naked. What happens in between determines your eternity. And unfortunately, the in-between is where people lose it. You're not taking a U-Haul trailer. With all your accolades, diplomas, money. You came naked. Oh, we may dress you up. And, and because you, we couldn't dress you up when you came out. Amen. You came out naked. And we may put you in a suit or in a nice dress. And get the mortician, if that's the right word. What do you mean I owe? The what? So they never were like the guy to make you look good. But have you ever seen a dead person? They're not there. When my dad passed away, I didn't even want to look at him because um, he looked totally different. That's why I don't do the open coffin thing because for me, it's like, huh? Who the heck is that? not the same so let's not get lost in the in-between and young people think the in-between is forever we have young people die every week because we have a large church hundreds of thousands of people every week young people die older people die we have funerals every single week many of them in our church do you know that always funerals so life birth death Timeline. Nobody knows what that timeline is. And what you do with that timeline determines eternity. So we're not just talking about salvation. We're talking about works. Not works that get you saved, but works of obedience. So it, it blows my mind how many Christians have disconnected from churches and from kingdom in order to, what, preserve life? Which is what? A moment. One of the things we have to understand is one of the basic doctrines, and Pastor Leon, when we do the NMO, we have to talk about the foundational doctrines. Repentance from dead works. So, because people get confused that people have to live sin conscious, but repentance from justification by faith. But the one is the understanding of eternal judgments, plural. Plural, not singular, judgments, eternal judgments. 
that every believer will face. You'll stand before God. It's a foundation of doctrine that means keeps you on the way. So that one day when you stand before Jesus, you will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Rethinking life, death and eternity. And people who live with the understanding of eternity are people who impact this world. Because they realize what matters is not the business deal, but it is reaching the person that you do the business deal with as well, and then using some of the profits that God gave you to reach other people as well. It all is about eternity. Everything we do impacts eternity. When I give an offering, when I don't give an offering, when I come to church, when I don't, when I date somebody, all these things impact us. Do we understand this? Because the Bible says we will give account for every work, not for salvation because you've been judged in Christ, but you'll be judged for everything else. Yes, you will. People don't talk about this, but we have to talk about this because one day you will stand before God and give account of the things you did and the things you didn't do. Yes, not sin, but the things God called you to do. And actually, when we understand that, it, it's not so easy just to lose your mind. Because you can lose your mind and lose out for eternity. Do we even realize, and that is something that people who die tonight without Jesus, there's not a purgatory, there's not a second chance. Your friends, your family, your relatives, people that have backslidden, do they still matter to us? Do we even think about these people? And that we are the ones that are there that can make an eternal difference in those people's lives? So CRC, we have to get back on track. Every pastor, every leader, we have to get back on track with our assignment from heaven, which is to win the lost at any cost. Another a uh, sermon I'm working on is the value of a human soul. Somebody tried to criticize us the other day and said, all we do is save souls. You better believe it. You better believe it. We are into saving souls in the name of Jesus Christ. You better believe it. Because a soul lost is eternally damned. Eternally. Eternally. And, and we are not taking this moderate approach that many people are taking across the world in, in Christian circles. Well, that people will be judged on their works. No. He is the only name. He is the only way. And therefore, we have to preach the gospel of Christ to our friends and to our relatives. And we have to bring people to persuasion that Jesus Christ is the way. So come on. Next Sunday, invite a lost person. Go find a prodigal. Be the Christian that God needs you to be and save the lost again in Jesus' name. On that cheerful note, we are going to receive the offering for tonight. So will the ushers please rise as we prepare our offering in all our churches while we listen to anointed items on every platform. God bless you. It's been a great honor to be here. You're going to see a lot of me. I love you. Come on, Blue Dane. Two weeks from now, this building is too small. Amen.
it always surrounds me.
lift our hands. And I stood in the power of your presence. For I felt the depths of your mercy. Oh, how your love always surrounds me. For I taste and see your goodness. And I stood in the power of your presence. Amen. Hallelujah, family. While we remain standing, I'm going to ask everybody that's seated to please stand up while we call Pastor Narita to the stage. The greatest words any parent would want to hear is thank you. And on behalf of the youth and students, we want to say thank you for being our mother. Thank you for leading by example. Thank you for being a, ro a role model. We love you and we appreciate you. Happy Mother's Day. Family, can you all hear me? Yes. Family, it is such a privilege to be part of the family of God. I always say that, but it really and truly is. And to have a family such as you. Awesome to have Pastor up with us tonight. Amen. What an anointed word. I tell you, I'm going to take it. I'm going to run with it. And just want to say thank you for all your love and all your support through the years. What an awesome family we have. Amen. While we stand, let's close the service in prayer. Father, we give you praise and glory. Thank you, Father God, that you bless your people and keep them and make your face shine upon them in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your grace, your mercy to follow them all the days of their lives in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask that you please remain seated. So that I could sing a million songs about your but I could never comprehend the price you paid. It was all for me. It was all for me. 